has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we are back, hour number three, Pharrell Coast to Coast, here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty. Great to have everybody here with us. Got a lot to do in the final hour. NFL to get to. We've got hockey and college basketball tonight. Uh, and, of course, Elvis will be in the building, Denny Bernstein uh, from Sirius XM NHL Radio. Uh, we've got to go through the pucks with him uh quickly joe uh update out at tory pines the farmers insurance round one today of course playing wednesday to saturday this week don't want to go up against the nfl on sunday with the conference championship game smart move patrick cantlay now in the lead tied for the lead with kevin you minus uh six for both of those guys morikawa has slipped joe uh with a couple bogeys he is now uh tied for 10th with ludwig gobert uh, Maverick McNeely in the mix, Hideki Matsuyama, Matthew Naismith, Nikolai Hoigard, uh, among the guys at the top of the leaderboard out there. Of course, Joe's with me every Tuesday and Wednesday on Coast to Coast, uh, as he, you see him with me, or you hear him with me every night on the very popular Sports Grid radio show, Carver and Lisi, uh, which airs at 8 p.m. East. Uh, and me and Joe will be back together tonight for that. It's very hot. Uh, and so there you go. You can even listen to that on, let's say, the Sports Grid app, if you would like, uh, which is available at the iOS and the Play Store if you'd like to get involved now. So go get the Sports Grid app, and you can listen to me and Joe uh, on that. You can track all the scores and live odds. You can, of course, uh, follow your favorite host, like Joe Lisi. I mean, why not? Uh, it's almost time. It's, I mean, we only got three football games left this year. You might as well follow Joe uh, and get all the juice from him uh, down the stretch we come. All right, Joe, how about some football talk for you now uh, to get you cooking? Uh, first, uh, let me say we welcome in our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe for Scotty. Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM 159, Sports Byline. Great to have you with us. Uh, I was talking with Davis uh, last hour, Joe, about this. The Harbaugh stuff is fascinating in this aspect. Yesterday, it sounded like there was those Mike Garofolo reports, NFL media reports, that it's like close to happening. He's going to be the Charger coach. The family's going out there, second in-person interview, uh, and it's going to get done. And then in the last 24 hours, you have a report that Michigan is now offering to be the highest paid coach in college football, uh, that that offer is sitting on the table in Ann Arbor if he would want it. And then that the Falcons are going to have a second interview with him in person. All right, Joe, uh, what do you think? Where's Jimmy going to go here? I think he might stay now with the $12.5 million on the table. We talk about once you get that train in motion, whether it be, you know, one national championship or multiple, right? He's had two, now three straight college football playoff appearances, one national championship. The program sells itself, and it's a lot easier to have success with 12 as opposed to four. Right, that's why Lane Kiffin maybe stayed at Ole Miss, and and Dan Lanning stayed at Oregon. It's a much easier sell. And look at Nick Saban. Nick Saban went to my Miami Dolphins. He couldn't cut it. It wasn't until le- he left the Miami Dolphins that he won seven national championships, and he's on cruise control. So, you know, you really have to think these things out. It's it's a win now mentality, whether it be college or the NFL. And if you don't have the right personnel, especially at the NFL level, they can move you out the door a lot quicker than than later. So college, he's already set. The university loves him. He's bring, brought home the national championship and now potentially with another two and a half million per year and whatever incentives could he have in, in terms of that with NIL and everything else, I'd stay. I'd stay, Carver. I mean, at the end of the day, though, Joe, he's going to make a lot of money wherever he goes. I know, but Where it's a headache. Well, it's a headache. Nine and a half, ten and a half. Now, look, I mean, I mean, nine and a half and twelve and a half would be a big deal to me or you. Uh, but when you, uh, you know, I don't think it Ridiculous. is the guys like him at this point. No, Go no ahead. you're right. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right about that. But all I'll just say, and and Saban said this throughout his his tenure at Alabama. When you go to the NFL, and even though it's a business now at college. 
it's a lot less of a business at college still, still than it is the NFL. The, it's different. And he had success at the NFL level. But, but that's he, why it's, but different. it's a lot. Yeah, but it's a lot different than when he coached seven. But, How but, long but, ago did they make it to the Super Bowl? Ten years ago. But these guys, these guys that are college coaches and they go and try the NFL, the success rate is awful. It's like 10%. I mean, no, but it does. It doesn't work. The majority, the vast majority of the time, the great college coach who tries to jump to the NFL, it doesn't work. He's different. He had success in the NFL. He did that. I mean, he, he's done it already. He went to a Super Bowl. Didn't win it, but went there. Had the, the Niners in championship games, you know, a couple years in a row. I, I think that there's unfinished business. And I think that he wants to finish that. And I personally, Joe, don't think there's any way that he goes back to Michigan. I, I'm probably dead wrong, but I don't think there's any way. I think he's trying to find the best situation, and it's either to have the quarterback in L.A. with the Chargers and have that for him or have a different type of situation in Atlanta. And Atlanta's talking to everybody, Joe. Let's just – that you got yeah. more stuff now in Atlanta. They've interviewed like six guys twice, and I just They're read – They're confused. They're confused. And I just read in the break, Joe – that Vrabel's there today, yeah. meeting with Arthur yeah. Blank. And then he's going to Carolina tonight to talk to the Panthers. And as uh, as we know, don't take the Panther job. That is somewhere you don't want to be, uh, is in Carolina. I'm not kidding, Joe. That is a, that is a at least for right now, that's a no-fly zone for me. If I'm a serious NFL head coach, I don't want any part. And whether Reich was bad or not, Joe, I think you found that out with Reich being there for the short amount of time that he was. That's a no-fly zone for an, for an established, good NFL head coach. That situation, that owner, that structure, I don't want that job. No, it's. I mean, you're right, because they're in disarray. Complete rebuild as well. Outside of a, a couple of young guys, they don't have a, a ton of, of offensive talent there. Who? I mean, what do they have there? Uh, Terrace Marshall, you have... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Miles Sanders, you have Chuba Hubbard. You don't have elite talent from an offensive perspective. You're going to have to draft that talent. So Adam Thielen is the most productive player uh, in terms of that team right now. So I agree with you. But again, you know, for Harbaugh, he's got, I mean, if it's not the Chargers, every other every other place outside of Carolina has major quarterback issues. Atlanta has no quarterback. I mean, yeah. so where's he going to go? Tell me where. We shall I mean, see. I, look, uh, I think Seattle? he ends up in L.A. What about I think he Seattle? ends up in L.A. We're not hearing I, anything I, about Seattle. I feel, like Seattle's all, I feel like Seattle's going to go the Tennessee route. They're going to take some, uh, head, some, some coordinator. They, <laughs> garbage guy. Uh, well, you Packers said it, shot like defensive cheap. coordinator Joe cheap. They go cheap. They'll go cheap. Well, they just paid Carroll a king's ransom forever. Uh, they'll go cheap with the next hire. Eagles interview Cliff Kingsbury for the offensive coordinator. That seems like a bad mix. Uh, Sirianni and Cliff Kingsbury. I don't see that, Joe, uh, coming to fruition at all in Philly. And we told you Fangio chopped in Miami or mutually agreed to part ways. And everybody already has him in Philadelphia with Sirianni. We'll come back, get into these games on Sunday. Coast to coast on the grid after that. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Some refer to him as a game manager, Mark. I mean, thrown for over 250 yards in divisional round, 39 attempts. I don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager. He was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown, no interceptions. Pretty efficient. Whatever we saw from Jared Goff in two home playoff games, I would expect something dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road. Uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career. His home road splits have always been pretty dynamic. Football full circle, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterback, Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live, Just prime put time. Just yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then like a two and a half. Yeah jumped on there's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever these are the best weeks to bet it's smarter to be on sports grid And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. All right, Joe, uh, before we get to the games quickly, and, and I saw this and Mafia just told me as well, um, one of the names circulating with the Miami job now that Fangio is out is Brandon Staley, of course, uh, chopped Charger coach uh, from this past year. So that... I'm sure that'll get you real excited uh, there down in South Florida, Joe. That'll really get Carver, you going. Carver, are you serious? The defensive guru had the worst defense in the NFL. Brandon, we're going to hire a guy that couldn't coach up his own defense. They were dead last in total defense in the NFL. And this is who McDaniel, the nerd, wants to bring on. I, I mean, are you? are we serious now? We're serious. I, I'm only telling you what people are saying, Joe. I, I told that I can do. Uh, it is I guess absolutely, it's possible. You know what it is? That's not. That is not a hire to to actually coach up the defense. You know what that hire is? Hey, buddy, McDaniel and Staley are similar. They're gutless, and so you know, one gutless coach needs somebody they have else. Have the same to agent too. They have oh, the same agent. Oh, that's also, a, hey, so. man. Hey, take a ride. Check it out. We suck. That's the Miami Dolphins. Hey, guys, we couldn't get it done this week. I got to see this guy. Can we chop his ass, McDaniel? Light a fire under his ass. Seriously, I'll coach him up. I'll throw a helmet across the locker room the way that defense played. I mean, really. Yeah, you know, the, all these coaches now are just to, you know, we just got to appease the star players on the uh, on the team. That's all it is. Can't get, can't ruffle their feathers. Can't can't get under the. Can't tell them they suck. You know. Can't tell them. Hey, Tyreek, you had one reception for 17 yards and you didn't get deep. Hey, two of you threw three interceptions. Two got returned for touchdowns. But you know. But you did a great job. We can't tell them that anymore. No, nope. it's amazing. I uh, can't do that, Joe. Can't do that. No, Brandon no, 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 Staley, no. Cannot... Gutless coach. Brandon Staley. Gutless there defensive coordinator. Uh, he was found a way to get you upset at the end of the year. Uh, the the only thing that would get me more upset is if you bring the Kelseys into this. Somehow, I try way. to avoid. I try to avoid anything involving the Kelseys. I feel like the people, they already have enough of them in their lives uh, uh, that we don't need to to bring it to their attention it's here uh, on coast to coast. You know? Did you see the podcast? Podcast. So you brought it up. You're the one who brought it up. I yeah, had no business in bringing it up. Out. Yeah, because he's all about him. He's a diva too, Jason Kelsey. Oh, I, I told my wife, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to go down. Oh, 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 Travis Kelsey. Once a Kelsey makes up his Joe. mind, there's no stopping him. Hey, hey, Jason, you know what? 
You sucked against Tampa Bay. You didn't block anybody. Your offensive line got abused by top holes and the front seven blitzing your quarterback continuously time and time again. Step up. You should have shown your face yeah. for three weeks after that effort in Tampa Bay. This guy Joe, showboating. Uh, showboating. Joe spending Joe spending a lot of his morning uh, looking at Instagram reels of the Kelsey brothers, clearly. Uh, he's very upset about what's going on here this <laughs> Cobra, afternoon. That upsets uh, there me are, in a big way. Don't there get are me four teams left, Joe. There are four teams left. Uh, they will play on Sunday AFC and NFC championship games. Why don't we start with the first one and Lamar Jackson, his first chance to get to the Super Bowl. He is one win away. But, Joe, of course, he's going to try, even though it's not the way it is. It's not. It's not any other game. He's going to try to treat it uh, like any other game. Football games your whole life. This your first AFC championship game. Is there a different feeling for you entering this game? Uh, no, nah, not really. Um, no different feeling. You know, it's, a, it's another game, um, a high level um, atmosphere game. That's about it. You know, the uh, atmosphere is going to be different. That's well, I know there's obviously more you want to do, but just with so much craziness, especially this all season, to, to get to this point right now where you're a game away from the Super Bowl, I mean, just what does it mean to go from maybe the uncertainty in the all season to now, you know, playing for an opportunity to go play for it all? Uh, to be honest, for that, it doesn't mean anything right now. You know, we still have, we still out there, and, um, you know, uh, the prize, you know, that what we're chasing right now. So um, it really doesn't change nothing until, until we complete the mission. That's it. Complete there the is, mission. Uh, Joe. Complete the mission. You need to That's complete it. the mission. That is all that is on That's Lamar it. and the Ravens' minds. Joe needs him to complete the mission. We already know Joe has pushed all the chips in here. With the Ravens, still three and a half, still 44 and a half. As we get ourselves a little bit closer to Sunday, Joe, I cannot get here fast enough. You know what this is going to remind me of? When Lamar Jackson played Florida State back in Louisville, and he absolutely boat raced the Seminoles. He was running all over the yard. I have a feeling Lamar Jackson boat races Kansas City. Don't be shocked if this line moves to four behind before game time. And guess what's going to happen? Everybody that missed out on the boat against Buffalo and Kansas City is going to take those four points. Oh, can't lose. Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs plus four? Are you kidding me? Plus the four outright. They're going to lose by double digits. Baltimore minus the nine and a half, altered, and Lamar Jackson has a breakout performance. 300 yards plus, OBJ with 80 plus, and maybe two thotties. And this game sails through the 44 and a half. I'm not backing down now. Nothing can talk me out of it. I don't care if the world's against me. Baltimore minus the not four. Mine, I'm laying the four. That's right. Four. It's three and a half. You don't you can well, you lay four if you want. Four. Uh, you you gotta win by four. Okay. Uh, you can alt it higher. Uh, six and a half, seven, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and a nine half. And a half. I said nine it. And nine okay. and a half. Plus well, 190. Even though I, I'm not, I don't want to go after you, Joe. Clearly, I want uh, the Ravens to win this game. But I have to at least yeah, give you some information much. that maybe would um, make you change your mind or somebody else. Patrick Mahomes, like this is actually from last week, but updated. Mahomes against the spread as an underdog. Now eight and three straight up. 9 1 and 1 against the number as an underdog, like he is this Sunday in Baltimore. And, and, and only 28% of the money is on, is, on the, uh, is on the Chiefs, right? You, you expect me to believe that. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Oh, Joe so, says it, no. Joe says that I don't is buy not it. true. No, no shot. Not true. No shot. No shot. No, I don't believe 28% of the money is on the Chiefs. I believe it's more like 68%. How about that? Those are my numbers. I don't need somebody to tell me. Baltimore. Well, Dominic. you know what we always say about those numbers, Joe. Uh, those numbers that they throw around. Uh, we, don't, we don't put a lot of stock uh, into them, that's for sure. Uh, how about quickly, let's get Dan Campbell in too. Uh, of course, the Lions and the Niners are going to play the late game uh, in Santa Clara. And I, I, fa- I saw this one today, Joe, and I just immediately thought you, the toughness of Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. Let's go. We're disruptive. We're disruptive, uh-huh. we're aggressive, and we hit. And uh, 
<laughs> and that to me has got to be what we're about. You know, yeah, th those man. are the principles. Look, th we may get hit That's on a couple of things, and That's it. and I know for me, um, I'm willing to give up something to get something. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Go, Joe. Yes. That'll fire the body. you up. The body. We hit. I love it. We That's hit. It. Sacrifice. We hit. Sac Take That's a headshot. Take a headshot to hit. go to the body. The uppercut, Larry. Oh, they're going to run it. I know. Dan Campbell's going to look to run it. Jameer Gibbs, 70 plus. The kid can scoot. The kid can scoot. The kid can scoot, uh, no doubt. Still seven, uh, flat seven there, and a flat 51 now for the total, Joe. Uh, so that's what we have uh, for the Lions oh. and the Niners uh, coming up here on Sunday. All right, Joe, we'll come back. Uh, we have a couple of other things to do. Uh, Football-wise, we've got college basketball we've got to talk about. I'll do the hockey with Denny Bernstein later on. For El Coast to Coast on a Wednesday, Carver High and Joe for Scotty. We're back on the grid right after this. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFC selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. game manager mark i mean throwing for over 250 yards in divisional round 39 attempts i don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager he was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown no interceptions pretty efficient whatever we saw from jared goff in two home playoff games i would expect something to dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career his home road splits have always been pretty dynamic football full circle only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy. The early base line. And what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not fought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, quarterbacks. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decision. No idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. Bad. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then like the two and a half jumped off. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Casey in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. 
Great to have everybody with us. BetMGM uh, is getting you ready. Big Game 58 is right around the corner, a couple weeks away out in Vegas. And listen to what they've got for you. How about betting $5 and then getting $158? you got to be kidding me. What do you have to do? How about downloading the BetMGM Sports Mode or Android or visit BetMGM.com? you got to sign up and deposit at least $5 into your newly created account. This is for new customers here. Place a wager in the amount of at least $5 at standard, uh, standard odds price. Once you have placed a bet, you will receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. You got to use bonus code SG158. BetMGM getting you ready for big game 58. Go and get involved. All right, Joe, uh, a couple of other things. I'll finish the lines with this. You'll actually like this one. Usually I try to find numbers against what it is that you're on just to try to give you the business and make you maybe think about it a little bit. But this one's actually pro uh, for you, Joe. In the Jared Goff era, the Lions are 34-16 and 16 ATS, 68%, including 9-3 and 3 ATS as dogs of six or more points. How about that? 70% of the bets are on the Lions plus seven. Joe probably right, believes six. that as much as he believes that there's 28% so, on the Chiefs uh, with the three and a half. So, so you rubbed my back before you bought me the drink. You, you, you put out yeah. the positive about Jared Goff, and then all of a sudden you drop the hammer with 70% of the, the bets on the Lions. You know that I take that as a negative. I'm not buying That's it right. come championship week. Now I think all of a sudden this information is overkill. They're going to try and suck you in like the banjo minnow back in the day. Put the lure in the water and try to get a thousand the bites. Banjo what, the minnow. banjo uh, minnow. From Remember Joe that? right there. Guaranteed Ooh. for a thousand uh, bites with Jimmy Houston. Okay, last thing. The most bet, uh, most popular bets. This is via tickets. So far, remember, it's only Wednesday. We got a couple days to go here. Lions money line is the most popular bet. Joe's on that. Lions plus seven. Joe's on that. Uh, Chiefs plus 165. Ravens minus three and a half. Joe's on that. Chiefs plus three and a half. Niners minus seven. The over in the Raven Chief game. Joe's on it. Ravens money line. Niners money line. And then the under uh, in the Niner line game. So I'm very the, pro line. I'm on the under. I'm but the remember this too, Joe, when you look at, the, at stuff like this. Uh, Michigan, a very, very uh, hot state right now when it comes to the legalized sports betting. Bet MGM very big there. Uh, everybody running to the window for the Lions. Sometimes, Joe, that does. Uh, there's a big boost there because you have a hometown team in it with a state that has the legalized gambling and it pushes it up. I, what I like to see is the totals, and that's what I like. Every The seventh most bet is only the over in the Kansas City-Baltimore game. I think that's a wheel special for me. Wheel special mallet. You know, bury your bookie with that one because I think that's an alt into the 60s. And then I still think the Niners-Lions is an under because I think Detroit's going to look to run it right down their throat. I really do. I think this oh, is going to they're going to look to run it. They're going to run it, Joe. Uh, don't be shocked. <laughs> you know, they're going to look to get this 24-20, you know, possession just the way Green Bay did. Dan Campbell's not going to back down. If he's going to – if they're going to go down, Carver – they're not going to go down from a finesse aspect. They're going to go down trying to take it punch for punch with the San Francisco 49ers. Look to run it right down their throats. Uh, I don't uh, disagree with you. I think that they're going to need to run the football. I think that that's got to be the thing uh, that they need to do. One last note, Joe, and then I want to get your college basketball uh, plays for tonight. Uh, Bill Vinovich will be the ref for Super Bowl 58 a couple weeks from now in Vegas. Of course, Bill, uh, been around a long time, one of the more, uh, you know, established and respected officials uh, in the NFL, calls a better game than most. And I actually saw this on uh, our sport, great job by our Sports Grid uh, social media team, Joe, as they were tweeting this out and putting this all over the place. Vinovich will be the referee. Over the last 15 seasons, he is the most profitable ref to the under- Joe, most profitable ref to the under. So keep that in mind when we get our teams late on Sunday night and they throw that big uh, Super Bowl 58 total at you that Vinovich is the ref and a lot of unders for him. Well, then I'll take the, the Lions to defeat the Ravens in the Super Bowl at 12-1 to 1 because that would go right into that, that M.O.
Uh, so I have no problem doing that. I have no You're problem. You're Lions, that. Ravens, all in for Joe. Lions, Ravens, let's go. Everybody, line them go. up, knock them over. We're ready to play. Uh, college basketball, Joe, uh, tonight. Let's take a look at the board. Let's see what we have going on. Last night, uh, we had some hits and we had some misses, that's for sure. Providence is at Seton Hall. They're at the Rock. Now, Seton Hall beat them, Joe. Uh, at the dunk about a month ago, so the return battle there. Miami is in South Bend against the Irish. NC State and Virginia getting together. Maryland catching five and a half at Iowa. We also have, oh, what do we have here, Joe? Is that a is that a system play that we have here tonight uh, in Tuscaloosa between Auburn and Alabama? I believe that it is, Joe, right now. Uh, Bama, I want to get you that up to the second number. Minus three and a half. For the Crimson Beautiful. Tide, 150, 162 and a half the total. Here's the problem, Joe, because you know I play these. This is uh, no doubt about it. Don't care who the teams are. Unranked team, favored over the ranked team. I'm always going to be there. And then as one of these sites put up today, 95% of the tickets on Alabama, 94% of the money on Alabama. Everybody run into the window, Joe, for Nate Oates uh, and the Crimson Tide tonight. Yeah, and I'm on Bruce Pearl. He's a money-making machine as an underdog. Outright. Give me Bruce Pearl plus the points in the Iron Bowl. You always take the points in the Iron Bowl. No, you always uh, take the system play, Joe. You never take the points in the Iron I Bowl, like especially if there's a too. system play. I like Maryland. They can, I, they can run. I like Maryland, too. Uh, Maryland covered for us uh, what, last week or two weeks ago at Northwestern. Uh, I think that they could do the same for us here tonight in Iowa against the Hawkeyes. Uh, FAU visiting Rice tonight. FAU was good to us live last week. We might have to look at that when we get on the radio show later. Nova and St. John's, that is at the Garden tonight, Joe. No Carneseca at the Garden with Nova in town. We have Mississippi State and Florida. Illinois visits Northwestern, minus three and a half for them on the road. Marquette and DePaul, a fat number here, Joe. 17 and a half for Marquette on the road at DePaul. Yeah, I like this slate here. I'm going to lay the 12 and a half with FAU. I think they're too too uh, athletic for Rice, and they, they didn't struggle to cover a double-digit spread. Like the Cats in the Mecca, uh, outright over St. John's, plus the three and a half in the money line. So keep an eye out for that. And I sort of like the ball, plus the 17 and a half tonight against Marquette. Mm, you sort of like the Paul uh, with the well, seventeen and a half. I'm on the Johnnies, Joe. By the way, uh, against Villanova, uh, Johnny's you're, you're tonight. You're just going against me. You're just going Johnny's. against me. I'll tell go, you what, Joe. Florida too at home in Gainesville. Mistake can't run the floor in Gainesville. That's going to be a hornet's nest. I'm on Northwestern with the points at home also uh, against Illinois. Give me the Wildcats. Let's go. Because they dominated Michigan. I can't do that. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Uh, By the way, nice effort by Michigan last night. I think they gave up about 200 points to Purdue. Uh, When is Uh, Juwan Howard going to get called out for that coaching job? Since he took over from Beeline, they've been going down like a dart. Every year they've regressed. They have, Joe. You're right about that. Kansas State and Iowa State in the Big 12 tonight. Always fun when they get together. Arkansas visits Ole Miss. We have Utah and Washington State, which is actually, Joe, a sneaky good game in the Pac-12 tonight. What do we got here, Joe? System play. Nevada minus the points at home against ranked Colorado State. We will be in on that. And New Mexico visits San Jose State tonight. They're laying a pretty good number on the road against the Spartans. System play, Arkansas outright over Ole Miss, plus the six and a half. Not system a system play. play. Mus- Not a system why, play. Why? It's a system play. Musselman catching points. Joe's system. Don't know. You say you called me out about your system. This is my system. Don't get involved in my system. Musselman outright plus the six and a half. So the system is Musselman catching points. That's the Joe system. <laughs> Musselman catching points. He's been We're going to take him. That's uh, it. So I'm on uh, Nevada at home against Colorado State. Nevada and Alabama for me, Joe, the unranked teams who are favored over the uh, ranked teams. We are going to make right. sure that we go that. There are several other games tonight as well, Joe. Uh, tonight on Carver and Lisi, uh, we will be going live through all of them, and I'm sure we'll have some plays uh, live as well uh, for them. In fact, that Alabama-Auburn game, uh, we will be uh, right in the heart of that, Joe. Can't when wait. we do Carver and Lisi tonight. Can't so uh, that will be very fun. Uh, I'm going to do the hockey with Denny, Joe. If if there's anything on the hockey board, 
uh, that does interest you. You know what? Let me do the best and the worst. Uh, let me do the best and the worst against the spread with you for the or, or money line for you with the hockey uh, before we do get out of here. And I'll do the games itself with Denny. These are the teams, Joe, that are making you money. Canucks plus 11.4 units to 32 and 15 money line. Jets, Flyers, Blues, and Red Wings getting people to the window. Worst, Flames minus 7.7. Islanders, Kraken, Senators, and the Blue Jackets, Joe. Losing people tickets minus 9.6 units. They have been awful. Crashing out the units, but the Flames will get it back. Flames are a good team. They're going to win the West. I'm telling you, don't be shocked. Yes. Flames. Uh, and going- best over team so far this year, the Stars, 29-17-1 and one to the over. The Panthers, the best team to the under, Joe, 29-16-1 and one to the under for Florida so far this year. We have a couple of these teams uh, in the mix. Islanders on the overside is so weird. Uh, to me to see that. Uh, we'll see if that changes a little bit with Patrick Owa. Joe, I got Denny coming up next, uh, so I will see you tonight. Carver and Lisi, 8 p.m. East, Sports Grid Radio. Great job, as always. Go for the two. We'll come back. Denny Burns, you on the puck. We're pro coach after this. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. game manager mark i mean throwing for over 250 yards in divisional round 39 attempts i don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager he was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown no interceptions pretty efficient whatever we saw from jared goff in two home playoff games i would expect something dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career his home road splits have always been pretty dynamic football full circle only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means, individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they In are. game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then like a two and a half. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us. It is always great to talk pucks with our man Dennis Bernstein in the fourth period and Sirius XM NHL Radio. Elvis is in the building. <laughs> Denny, always good to see you, my man. Uh, we're going to get into the games. We're going to get into the good stuff. But unfortunately, Denny, we've had too many of these yeah. uh, mm-hmm. over the past few years where we have to talk about something off the ice and once again today with hockey canada world juniors 2018 uh tell us just quickly denny your thoughts on this and this whole scene we've got players of course as we know including carter art who have taken a leave of absence from their teams that's not official yet uh that he's part of this but him dube etc you can kind of connect the dots yeah you can be assumptive on the players right this is going to be five players going to be formally charged what i assume happens from there carver is that they'll be suspended by the nhl I assume either indefinitely or for the balance of the season. Now, as a question, once they're charged in Canada, the players that play for American team, will they even be allowed back in the States? So, uh, and it's, I think the timing of this, I think it was a little orchestrated because if you look at the press conference for the uh, London police, uh, they're going to do it on February 5th, which is the day after All-Star weekend. So what does that do? Mm. That means that Gary and Bill don't have to really comment on it because it's quote unquote an, on, an ongoing investigation. So, uh, I just hope the truth comes out, and if justice is served, that's fine. But that's the situation. So I assume you will not see these players again in this season, and then you could draw question marks as to their future. If they do get you know, jail time or a plea deal, plea bargain, uh, the NHL is in a – they're not in a difficult spot. They're doing the right thing here at, the, at this point. They're just waiting. But once the formal charges come out, I assume you'll see suspensions for all the players. Uh, I would assume uh, the same thing as you, Denny. No doubt about that. Uh, I think that yeah. all these guys that you saw in the last 24 hours with the leaves of absences, don't plan on seeing them anytime soon uh, back in the NHL, uh, one way or and, the other. And, this is going to be yeah. a lengthy process. Yeah, and the one point that people say, well, why haven't they been suspended yet? Again, it's just allegations. I'm sure all the players have lawyers. And again, this is a Hockey yeah. Canada situation, not an NHL situation. So there's only so much the NHL could do until the review was completed, the investigator was completed, and now charges are going to come up. So this will all, you know, get, there'll be much more clarity after February 5th. But I assume that's going to be the road the NHL will take with these players. Uh, I'm certainly uh, with you on that. All right, Danny, let's get on the ice now and uh, several sure. topics to get to. I want to start, of course, with my squad because I, I think – me and you had even talked, and a lot of us have talked, that, you know, the Islanders, it was on the edge a few times for Lane Lambert throughout this yeah. season. Uh, there were some really bad losses, and then they'd kind of bounce back and then have a really good couple-week streak, and then there'd be a couple more bad losses. And last week was kind of the tipping point. They had an awful road trip culminated with mm-hmm. that miserable loss in Chicago against the Blackhawks yeah. last Friday night. I was not surprised that Lou – fired Lane Lambert because I think Lou knows that he's kind of on the griddle a little bit here, uh, that he needs to get this team in the playoffs and keep them good. But Patrick Waugh, Denny, out of nowhere, and there was no rumbling of this, no sense uh, of this coming, that he was close to getting back into the NHL. Patrick Waugh, the new Islander head coach, and already you hear these guys, and I know they're going to talk up the new coach in the building, but Barzell's sure. got a smile ear to ear. Bo Horvat, yeah. Horvat's got a smile ear to ear. Different scene on the island now. Well, the Islanders couldn't finish games. You know that, Carf. Like, you know, how many yeah. games did they blow third period leads, losing overtime? So that was the genesis of all this. And then, look, you get an entirely different. And, yes, is anybody surprised at the lack of leaks from Lou Lamarillo's organization about Patrick Wall? Of course not. Lou's the lock and key. He's Fort Knox, right? So that information was going to get out. Like, it's an entirely different paradigm with respect to who's coaching now when lane, lane lampert was as low-key as there is patrick was anything but low-key so he's going to bring a certain energy behind the bench you can see him behind the bench in the first game yelling at guys pushing guys let's go let's go you saw today and they do now they're doing huddles of practice on the ice and everybody's putting their hand in like a like a high school basketball team so i'm not sure that's going to work but the team has to play better so i i think they needed a change there they needed a new voice and I just think the style that Patrick Guar brings, uh, his, you know, his, uh, the, the passion he has for the game, can't hurt this team. It can only help. But again, you got to score more. The, the goalie's got to be a little bit better as well. But uh, I'm not shocked they make the change. To go to Patrick Guar when you have a Craig Barube or a Jay Woodcroft out there available who's been coaching in the league, certainly surprising to me. 
Yeah, and, and I think me and Scotty were talking about this. You know, he obviously wasn't very liked with some of the stuff in Colorado, maybe a little too boisterous yep. for people. His tenure sure. with the Avalanche, uh, was, you know, it, it ended very poorly in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Nanny's been coaching juniors and even owned the team, right? Danny, he owned the team, ran the yeah. team, whatever the deal was in junior hockey. Right. I, it seems like, though, he's the type of guy that, wants to win so badly and is going to learn from those mistakes that he made the first crack that he had in Colorado. And it's been so long. I'm interested to see how he's changed and what philosophies he's put in and how different he is with the media, et cetera. Cause I think he really wants to, obviously now he's back. He wants to stay there and not get thrown out again. Yeah. 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 And you're right. There had to be some distance, but between the time he walked away from Colorado and coming back into the league. Now, is it longer than he wanted? I'm sure it was. I'm sure he wanted to be back sooner. But again, when you put a coach in, you know, it's a press of fresh air during the season. My question is, if he wants to change the style of this team or structure of this team, how do you do it now? How do you do it at game 42? With limited practice time, with an all-star break coming up, when the guys are going to leave, the timing isn't beneficial for him. I think it's more about okay, getting more energy in the room. And you're right. A lot of it is the attitude of players. And they seem to like this coach. So that, that seemed to work. But now how's it work on the ice, right? The game last night against yeah. Vegas, all right, that was a close game, right? Vegas, But Vegas had nine guys out. So my, my question is, how much of a, an effect can he change on the ice with systems and structures this far into the season? I'm not sure he can do it. So it's more about his passion for the game and his willingness to, you know, really bond with the players. Uh, we are, Denny, at about the halfway point for everybody in terms of the 41-42 game mark. We do have the All-Star break next weekend in Toronto. Every week here, we look at the odds, you know, the the big board, the Stanley Cup odds, who's the favorites, who's this. And I've been surprised, you know, for the last two months, like Colorado has been on like a level by themselves Mm -hmm. on that odds board to win the Cup. And the gap's getting a little tighter with Edmonton Mm -hmm. playing so well and Florida's moved in. And, And I know Colorado's a good team, Denny, but I don't think that they're that much better than everyone else that they should be prohibited favorites to win the cup. We know how the NHL playoffs work too. Yeah. I think those odds are powered by the fact that Nathan Kinnon's having a great season and probably will be yeah. the heart trophy winner. Although maybe Connor has something to say in the second half of the season, because they're charging up their, the standings, but I think that's it. And then when you look at their, their core four, you look at Ranton and you look at uh, McKinnon, you look at um, Kel McCarr and then you, know, you see Gabe Landeskog skating again. So maybe he comes back for the playoffs. I, I think that and you look at them last season. The question is, like, their second line was not there. Like, is Ryan Johansson and J- Jonathan Drouin and, you know, Ross Colton, are they going to lead that team to a, they have a good enough middle six? You're right. They shouldn't be as prohibitive favors as they are, and maybe that changes as it's deep into the season. Now, I don't think Edmonton is going to win the rest of their games. I don't think they're going to go on a 50-game winning streak. And I would prefer them. I'm an all friend, to be honest with you. They have the streak at the end of the season, not in the middle of the season. Maybe they're peaking too fast. Uh, and you also have to cl- include Winnipeg. You know, the reason, yeah. the reason why I think you see Colorado stay up there is that the other teams, like a Vancouver, they haven't been in the playoffs for, for a while. Winnipeg's not a sexy name, even if they have a really good team. But I think when you look at the reliable and at the big names, you're going to stick with Colorado. I think that's why they stay at the top. But that's a very difficult Western Conference to come out of, Carver. Right? So I think you might oh. have a play. I mean, you could have good money on other teams coming out as well as Colorado when we get to April uh, and May. The, the West is a bear, Denny. I, I yeah. mean, you just look yeah. at these teams out there. And I think we all kind of thought maybe at this point that Vancouver would have some kind of a dip, that maybe they'd come back to earth a little yeah. bit. But, I mean, they're just rocking and rolling every single night. I mean, they've extended now. They're in the Pacific. I mean, they got a, what, six, seven-point lead yeah. in that division. I mean, they win every single night. You know, there's an amazing stat Mike Kelly from National Network had a couple of weeks ago. Like the average team that when he scored off the rush is about 11 percent or 9 percent. The second best team in the league is 11 percent. They're 22 percent. They never miss. Look at their shooting percentages. 25, 22 percent for fans out there that don't track the NHL. 10, 12 percent is probably the average. They're shooting twice that. So it's been a remarkable run. But they do have a you know, they have a possible Norris winner and Quinn uh, Hughes who has been fantastic out there. My, Brock Bezer, Pedersen. My, my concern with Vancouver is once they get to the playoffs, they have a kid like Pia Suter as their second line center. Are they too top heavy? If you could shut down yeah. Bezer and Pedersen and Miller, what do they have? Uh, they have some depth scoring. That's my question for a team that hasn't been in the playoffs lately. That would be my question, but it's been a great run for Vancouver. It's not a mirage. It's not a great start. That's a very good team.
Right. I, I think some of the charts and graphs crowd would probably tell you that that percentage won't last into April and May. And when you get in the playoffs, it that stuff 40 kind games, of Park Harbor. it's lasted 40 games. So it's hard for me. Hey, I got, I tucked away a 35 to one for them, Denny, uh, a oh, couple beautiful. months ago oh, when they got off to that hot start. Oh, yeah. So at least I have yeah. that working for me. I think the team in the East that everybody's kind of waiting to fall back to the pack is Philadelphia. And listen, right. I know people don't like to, a lot of people don't like Tortorella and mm-hmm. he wears on people quickly, but the proof's in the pudding, Danny, like, He's done a hell of a job with that team this yeah. year. And now Hart, as we mentioned before, who knows what happens now with the yeah. goaltending situation. Mm-hmm. That could change things. But I think people are waiting for Philly to kind of fall back. Yeah, well, they got a great boost from Sam Erson in that. He's been fantastic. And, yeah, yeah. all the people that say Torts is a dinosaur and he won't work anymore and it doesn't work anymore and his style doesn't work anymore. Uh, Carver, I'm telling you, there's probably 10 teams – Man for man, is more talented than Philadelphia, and look where they are in the standings. They commit. They don't quit on plays. They block shots. They do all the things that a John Tortorello team does, and it's worked. Now, do I think they're a dangerous team in the playoffs? I just don't see enough offense from this team to think that they could be dangerous to be, let's say, a Rangers or a, or a Carolina or a Boston. It's a great story. He's done a great job. Now, can he control himself towards and, and build off this, and as they add more talent to this team, which they need to, to be a legitimate contender, like, can he stay the course? But it's been a great story. And for all the people that say retreads don't work, well, here's one proof that it does work. And you could also go back to Vancouver. Remember, uh, uh, Tockett was coached in Arizona, got another shot in, that, in Vancouver. And same thing with Patrick Roy now. A lot well, now. A lot of people are saying, and Lou's done some study about the coaches the second time around. It's been a great story. Now, it's not been the second time around in Philly. Great story for Tortorella. Right. He deserves all the praise for that team achieving what they have. Uh, me and Scotty the other night had the Sharks at plus 290 on the road money line against the Kings uh, mm-hmm. at the Crypto. Uh, there's a lot of, of heavy, heavy favorites tonight in the NHL. Kings are yeah. one of them, minus 190 with the Sabres coming into town. Are they going to finally get their act going at home or anywhere, Denny, right. for that matter? I don't know, Carv. Are you a championship team when you've won eight home games at the halfway point? And that's what the LA's won. I, I think they win this game tonight, but I would definitely play the under here. The Kings haven't scored. They just don't score goals anymore. And that's why they've dropped so precipitously in the, in the standings. Is that their offense dried up. They get nothing from their bottom six. Kopitar and Kempe haven't combined for a five-on-five five goal since January started. So that's it. So th- this is a game. It's not a must-win game, right? The must-win game is a game that eliminates you from the season. But this is a can't-lose game. I said that on Monday against San Jose, and they found a way to lose that game, though. So I think that – and they got a road trip coming up with Co- Colorado on – on uh, on friday so this is a game that i would definitely play to under might be a little bit of cautious about the money line though uh 10 seconds left denny does winnipeg hold down toronto tonight we know how good they are defensively yes they do they're an excellent team and they've got the goaltending and defense and they're a little more juice in the building when vancouver comes when the toronto comes in denny great job as always dennis bernstein the fourth period coast to coast we're back right after this says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Some refer to him as a game manager, Mark. I mean, throwing for over 250 yards in divisional round, 39 attempts. I don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager. He was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown, no interceptions. Pretty efficient. Whatever we saw from Jared Goff in two home playoff games, I would expect something dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road. Uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career. His home road splits have always been pretty dynamic. Football full circle, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterback, Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live, Just prime put time. A yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late bad. night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then like a two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio. Wrapping this one up. Uh, here is the NHL uh, for tonight. We did a couple of uh, things there at the end with Danny. Winnipeg is in Toronto, as I was saying to him. Toronto minus 150. Jets plus a buck 25 with a six and a half. Uh, Jets got great structure, great defense. I think they hold uh, Toronto down tonight. And I think that they win that hockey game. I'm on the Jets plus a buck 25. The Coyotes head uh, east. They're in a the little Florida swing. It starts in sunrise. Minus 250 for the Panthers. I mean, these are heavy lumber numbers here. The Bruins are home for Carolina. Minus 145, plus a buck 20 for the Canes. Flat six the total. I like the under in that one. Avalanche laying minus 275 against the Capitals tonight. Flat six, like the over there. Like the minus one and a half with Colorado. The Canucks minus 250 against the Blues. I'll go with Gabe. Lay a goal and a half at even money for Vancouver. Kraken are minus 300. I mean, this is silly. Uh, the Blackhawks stink. Uh, the Kings are minus 190, as we talked about with Denny there, uh, plus a buck 55 for Buffalo out at Staples. Uh, and Southern California at Torrey Pines, uh, Patrick Cantlay is in the clubhouse at seven under. Great round for him. And how about this kid, Ryu Hishitsune? Uh, Remember him yesterday? Cam gave him out at like 130 to one. He's tied for the lead, this kid, uh, who's been playing very well, Japanese player. Kevin Yu is also tied for the lead at 7-under. The Irish Bear one shot back. Matsuyama a shot back. Hoygaard, Maverick McNeely two shots back. Uh, so some of our selections here. Round one out at the Farmers Insurance at Torrey Pines getting things done. All right, so good night tonight. You got lots of hockey. There's lots of NBA. There's tons of good college basketball. I will see you at 8 p.m. East or you will hear me at 8 p.m. East. I always screw that up. Carver and Lisi Sports Grid Radio. Me and Joe will be there. Uh, Scotty, of course, back tomorrow. It is a Warren Sharp Thursday. They will get you ready for the NFC and AFC championship games coming up this Sunday. Great job by everybody as always. Game Time Decisions is next. Pharrell Coast to Coast. See you tomorrow on the grid.